sharing simple tips for doing so let me introduce you all to our interesting speaker ms priya mukherjee ma'am who has been a bridge builder with 24 years of experience in fields of investment banking finance transformational ethics cultural sensitization hr intervention millennial management sustainability themed living and life skills i yield the floor to you ma'am thank you so much gurjan and that was very beautifully expressed when you said that we all want to change but it's not so easy so <laughs> this is exactly the thought with which today's session has been designed even before getting started good morning namaskar to each and every one of you thank you so so much for inviting beslak and for having me to share this particular sessions topics discussion with all of you i can't tell you what a great joy it is and i mean that when i say it is a joy to have an interaction with students of your institute it's not because you all are calling therefore i'm using these words but in the past we've had three interactions this is our fourth interaction on mental emotional wellness and each time anushka and i have walked away feeling so happy and so speechless with the kind of maturity you all have displayed when it comes to the questions that you all have asked at the end of the session so we are very hopeful that today also you're going to be keeping your interactive spirit very much alive and well which means please just jot down whatever questions you have as we are proceeding along the session and towards the end of the session we will have 10 to 15 minutes where we do a q and a at that time please either unmute yourselves or use the chat box and ask questions i'm also going to request if you all can either have pen and paper next to you or maybe just mentally keep a note of just one or two guidelines perhaps as to what it is that you find useful in today what we're sharing at the end i'd like to ask you all what is it that you find useful as a takeaway so you could actually have a couple of takeaways that are useful because at the end it shouldn't be you're just sitting and listening and you say yes yes all this is good but then you walk away and you're the same person who was the person one hour before so that's not our intention at all so just keep paper and pen handy next to you before proceeding into the session itself for the benefit of those who are relatively new to westlark because i'm told by the sort team there are students of different years you have first year second year third year students there are multiple years today let me just tell you in a minute or so what westlark is all about so you might have heard of our institute we are des leadership academy and research center we are located in the same building as the college of architecture and we've been around for 10 years in fact last year was our completion of 10 years our job is simple to understand but difficult to do we try to give students things which are not there in the textbook but which you need for living in other words life skills so then how do you go about doing that so we started initially by giving training on workshops like time management goal planning stress management so on and so forth then we realized along with these we need to groom on worldly skills so like how do you present yourself for a job interview recently for the sister institute we did a series of sessions on campus to corporate so how do you do an online interview for example when you're sitting in front of the interviewer not face to face but on the screen what happens to your body language how do you take care of your pitch your diction and so on and so forth along the way we also realized that mental emotional wellness is crucial so uh, we have one to one counseling which our counselors do but we also do group counseling and we take up mental emotional wellness as a very big part of our work which is where in fact today's topic on changing habits comes in we also do sessions for teachers for non teaching staff members for the parents of students so there's a whole spectrum of stakeholders who we try and address and like gunjan very nicely mentioned it's also about sustainability so that is also an area of work for us any time you want let's say to seek any kind of guidance or help just reach out to us westlark at gmail.com v e s l a r c at gmail.com later on as we end the session we'll also share with you our phone number and email id once again we are there on facebook we are there on instagram you can drop us an email you can just give us a call and let us know any time that you need any help that's outside of your textbook and course curriculum please reach out to westlark we are there for you and let me also clarify there are no charges for students it's completely free of charge in vs we've been set up as a hub in order to help students and believe me when i say nothing gives us more joy than when a student comes to us and says ma'am i was confused we got clarity now after interacting with westlark or we were not very sure and now we are feeling better we are much better off in terms of our mental understanding so that's the 
raison d'être, as we say in French, the reason for our living, the reason for our being there. On that note, let's get started with today's session. I'm just going to start a screen share at this point. Uh, I'm sorry, is this, is this visible? Oh, yes, ma'am. Okay, thank you so much. So, that's right, okay. This today's topic, let me tell you how the Genesis came about and why we chose this today for discussing with the students of visit. Throughout this last year of the pandemic and even now what is continuing, one common point which we're getting to hear from everybody, be it students, be it grown-ups, older people, is how much our brains have been getting hijacked by emotions and behaviors. Now the word hijack might sound very harsh, very strong, but please believe me when I say, this is exactly what many of us have found is happening and what we're experiencing. So for example, in the beginning last year, exactly a year back when the lockdown had started, there was uncertainty, there was fear. Then after a while, people started taking it as a vacation. So the initial few weeks, a lot of people thought, okay, now let's sit down and chill. It's so nice. We don't have to go out. We don't have to travel. And it's so pleasant not to have to meet people. You can sit around in your rooms. You can attend classes online. You can do your exams. Exams are postponed. Oh, wow. So I saw all these internet memes which emerged, you know, Corona and then student hiding behind Corona and exams trying to threaten. Then came the boredom part and the restlessness part. That, okay, what do we do? That's when... Uh, the banana bread and the Dalgona coffee and all of that happened and let's learn some kitchen skills and let's learn singing and let's learn a new language. That was also the time very interestingly when people started getting into Netflix, Amazon, Hotstar, K-drama, K-pop, all of that in such a major way that I lost count of how many people were saying that, oh man, you've got to do this, you've got to see this. And we could see what was happening and some of us experienced that ourselves our brains were getting controlled and pulled in different ways because we just couldn't make out what we should be doing. There was no sense of direction. We don't know what way the country is headed. The world is headed for that matter. We don't know what's gonna to happen to the virus. Vaccines were still not on the scene. So this was the next phase. And then somewhere around December, there was this, oh yeah, the year is getting over, 2020, goodbye, good riddance to you. 2021 will be better. And then 2021 happened and all that changed was the date of the calendar. And of course, thankfully vaccines also came in, but that's a different story. Even that we don't always have a clear sense of direction. We don't always know in what way we're heading, but unfortunately many of us have found our habits have changed and not for the better. Some of us, however, have gone against the tide and we have managed to bring in good things and new things into our lives. So I know young people who have started doing meditation. I know people who have gone back to reading. I met an engineering student sometime back, met meaning not in the physical world, but online, who told me that, ma'am, I used to read books until my age standard or so, and then I stopped all that because of my 12 board entrance exams. I've gone back to reading. And I said, excellent, that's great for you. And he's made it a practice to read a few pages every day. But then such people are a small part of the whole you can say try. Most people have found their lives have been signed away to what I call the algorithms. So your Facebook, WhatsApp, Instagram. Somebody told me, ma'am, you've got to help me. I said, what's the problem? He's one of the brightest students I've met. He said, ma'am, every day I'm spending two to three hours on Japanese anime, anime manga. He's a big fan of the Japanese culture. So I started laughing because I told him the first thing you need to know, you're not the only one. So students, Today's topic is based on this premise and assumption that you want to change a habit. Either you want to bring in a new habit or you want to give up something that does not serve you well. That's the basic assumption. That's the basic, what we call in statistics as a null hypothesis. So let me tell you how we've structured the session. The first tiny part is what are the habits we need to change? The next part is what are the guidelines? Now the second part is the major part. The third part, are the concluding thoughts, which is again a tiny part. Now, the first part needs us to do some introspection. So what I'm going to do is take you straight away to that and ask you a slightly embarrassing question for which you need to think and then use the chat box to answer the second part of the question. Think of three habits you really want to change. 
And out of those three, mention in the chat box one habit which you feel is crucial. You really, really want to change. You feel good about yourself if you can change it. All right. And obviously, if you feel uncomfortable sharing your answer in the chat box, don't do this. So just hold the thought in your mind. But if you're okay, if you're not too self-conscious, if you feel it's something that can be discussed in our common student forum, it's appropriate and it is something others also might be benefiting from, please go ahead and write that in the chat box. So I repeat, in your mind or on paper, please list out three habits of yours you really want to change. And of that, select one and put that in the chat box. So we'll take a few moments of time for this. Okay, so let me just go to the chat. Okay, Gautam, what you've written is lovely. Staying in the present moment, I'm assuming. So procrastination, waking up late, doing everything in the last minute, procrastination, uh, binge watching, being lazy. I'm going to jot down some of these. Exercise daily, okay, good. Very good answers coming in. I really, really appreciate your honesty. Sleeping. Uh, not completing things on time. That's again, procrastination. Negativity, yes. Overthinking, yes. Procrastination, all right. Good, good answers, everybody. Really, really appreciate your honesty. Let's see if there are any other answers which come in. Okay, mobile phone use, daydreaming, yes. Piyush, this is common, don't worry. Not living in the present, yes, Arya, this also happens. This also happens. Uh, gaming, yes, again, common. Needing to study efficiently, yes. Being lazy, yes, that happens too. Social media addiction, okay. Okay, okay. All right, so I'll just get out of the chat box. And first of all, students, a uh, very appreciable self-awareness level, I would say, because for you to firstly know what is it, that's something necessary to change in your minds and your lives that calls for a good bit of introspection. Sometimes you know it, sometimes you don't know it. Many of us have these in our blind spots. The second is you do have the courage to admit that, yes, this is what I want to change. So one is clarity, one is courage. If you have both, I would say congratulations because that's already the first step you've taken towards changing. And you might think I'm just trying to make you feel good about something very small. Please believe me when I say it's not something very small. When we interact with students, we find there are many students who live in denial, meaning they're not willing to admit they've got a problem that needs changing. When we say problem, we're not talking of anything very major or life-threatening. But we're talking of something that stops you from realizing your potential, from being the best person that you can be. So in that sense, we're using the word problem. So if you have the honesty and the clarity, meaning the courage and the clarity to say, yes, I have an issue and this is the issue I have, I would say you are already taking the first right steps that are necessary for the change to happen because without this change can't happen. Now, let's take a look at what happens when we run this exercise typically and ask students, what are the common answers that come up? And y'all can just tally and see how many of y'all have given answers which are similar to the answers which came up just now in the chat box. So lack of focus, being distractible, procrastination, getting angry, being unable to wake up early, being defensive, being uh, self-critical, overthinking, being a people pleaser, being addicted to certain foods and being a slave to technology. That last point, number nine, covers everything, your social media addiction, gaming, etc. Spending inordinate amount of time, even looking at things on Google and Wikipedia. You may say, I'm not on WhatsApp and Facebook and Instagram. I don't waste my time there. But I know people will start doing a research for a subject, for a project, 
and then get into 15 different tabs. I know students will have 50 or 60 tabs open at any point of time on their computers. Now that's dangerous. If you're in that category, please understand that's something that we need to change. So these are the common examples which emerge. And what does that tell us? That then tells us, essentially, you are not alone in this whole journey. I've taken a picture from one of our epics. This is from the Mahabharat. Many of us might remember. So Duryodhan at one point, he says something to Sri Krishna, which I personally find very poignant. He says, I know what I shouldn't be doing and I can't seem to stop doing it. And I know what I should be doing, but I can't seem to make myself do it. And in a way, I think all of us can relate to that. We can all identify with that because we know what we should be doing, but there's a gap between that knowledge and our action. So it's like when it comes to gyan, when it comes to knowledge, we're really, really good. We have the script in place. If you have to give advice to a best friend, we'll be perfect. But when it comes to practicing certain things in one's life, we're not as good. So let me just have a white screen for now. And what I'm going to do is very quickly, before going ahead, take up some of the points which have come up. Some will get discussed in the slides which follow in greater depth and detail but some of them I'm going to tackle right now. So let me start by first categorizing the points that you had shared on the chat. Some students wrote about things which are negative and you want to give them up. So for example, you spoke about binge watching or procrastinating, not completing things on time, being a little lazy with your work, spending too much time on the mobile, daydreaming, gaming, so on and so forth. This was one category. Another category is those who want to bring in a good habit. So for example, exercising daily or making sure you're living in the present moment or making sure you're not thinking when you're doing a task that I'm working so hard, am I really going to get the result at the end of it? One of you wrote, is it going to be worth it? So that sort of thinking. Now that comes in a different category where you're trying to bring in something positive. So please understand, we can categorize them into two parts in our lives. One is the good things we want to bring in the second is the negative things which we want to drop. It's important initially to have this distinction. While most of these will be tackled as we proceed, there are just two of them I want to pick up right now. One student who wrote about the present moment consciousness. In fact, there were two people, two students who talked about living in the present moment. That's something very appreciable. The very fact that you're getting it at this young age is very commendable. It shows that you have a lot of grace from the universe in order to be there to understand this is important. Okay, I just request the host to just try and have uh, the others on mute, please. Thank you. It's definitely very commendable. You can pat yourself for it. What you need to know is living in the present moment calls for practice because the nature of the mind and the senses is external oriented. Our eyes don't see inside the body, they see outside. Our ears will not listen to what's going on inside the body until you stop up your eardrums and then you can hear your own heartbeat. Otherwise, they're catching things outside. And that's the way we are structured so that we can survive in the world. Our minds will have 60,000 thoughts in a day. So when we say living in the present moment, it has to be a conscious and deliberate training which we give ourselves to turn inward and see, am I aligning myself with what I'm doing? Are my mind, my words, and my actions, all three in the same line, are all three of them aligned? That is being in the present moment. Right now, when I'm talking to you, right now, I'm just gazing at the camera of my laptop. If I can do that with full attention and awareness on that, every cell of my body is just reduced to that. Even if I'm hungry, I'm not going to realize it. Even if I'm tired, I'm not going to realize it. Being mindful means what I'm saying what I'm thinking, what I'm doing, everything is in synchronicity. And this calls for deliberate and conscious practice. I'm repeatedly using the word deliberate because it's training, because without training, our minds and senses are always going to be exterior oriented. That's simply the nature of the human being. We won't get into the reasons why that goes into metaphysics. But I'm delighted that at least two students have raised this particular point and I'm sure there are many of you perhaps also have it in your minds. It's possible. 
you need to not take it as a battle that's my only suggestion to you every time your mind gets distracted and you find you're not in the present moment or the student who wrote that there is daydreaming in your life i remember you wrote that in all caps in the chat box please note that is normal that is not abnormal in fact to be mindful is super normal to be mindful to be living in the present moment that calls for training to be distracted that's going to be the nature for many of us and of course there are more reasons as to why we distracted in this present times because of the nature of social media and technology which is a slightly different topic we'll get into that so shortly so coming back to this first point that i wanted to talk about present moment living mindful living consciousness of the present moment can be beautifully done and of course you have allies for that you can do your prana which helps you greatly you can do 5 to 10 minutes of meditation in the morning perhaps even in the evening which really helps you you can learn to keep your hands in what i'm doing right now here the gyan mudra this is beautiful again to bring the mind back to yourself i personally find this extremely helpful when i have a lot of interactions with people and my mind at the end of the day can be feeling fatigued or scattered it's great to bring the mind back to oneself so that you are there with everything that's happening your breathing your thoughts your words your actions everything is in one beautiful continuous flow so try it check it out and see you'll get to learn a lot what you need to do is listen to people then finally decide what works for you don't blindly give your faith to someone whoever says i hold the formula for you be very suspicious what we will always say in veslak we always say we're going to give you a basket of tools you pick and choose what applies to you because every human being is unique in sanskrit we say na bhuto na bhavishyati nobody like you has ever been born no one like you will ever be born on this planet 7 billion people and everybody is different that's a wonder it's a wonder of wonders which means you have to be true to yourself you have to respect and honor the uniqueness by working a little bit to customize solutions if anyone is giving you a solution on a plate say thank you and take it and then see how to adapt it to who you are because that work only you can do and only you can do it best so this was the first thing i wanted to share from the chat box entries which had been uh, appearing on the screen the second thing is about the student who talked about exercise that's a beautiful thought and when we come to one of our guidelines maybe the third or fourth guideline i'd like you to just keep in mind what you had put up in the chat i'll help you see how we can do a correlation long story short what you need to do is two things a ask yourself why you should be exercising what are the benefits so to bring in any good habit into your life be very very clear how you gain the clearer you are about the benefit the more your mind is going to agree to put in the effort and you might think when it comes to exercise is it not the body's effort not really the body is doing the easy part the physical part it's the mind which has to buy into it the mind has to be persuaded the mind must be convinced and sure that yes it's worth getting up a little bit early to do a few minutes of cardio or athletics or whatever it is you're doing or swimming or anything yoga sun whatever is the thing that calls and appeals to you for the mind to buy it, the mind is like think of the mind as a trader or a businessman have the balance sheet approach profit versus loss if i sleep half an hour more i'm getting nice extra sleep and we all know what sleep means for students but if i am willing to invest 20 minutes or half an hour of time what is my gain more clarity a fresher brain better body better muscles better immunity better endurance better will power stronger investment for my future where i'm less susceptible to all kinds of lifestyle ailments a feeling of fitness being more creative in my brain because when i breathe in more deeply in exercise i'm giving more oxygen to my brain the brain needs sleep apart from sleep it needs oxygen and good quality glucose meaning the right kind of foods so the moment you make this balance sheet you know your mind is going to be convinced that yes it's a worthwhile investment so that's the first part when you are bringing in a good habit the second part is just having the clarity is not enough you need to figure out that time of the day when you are going to do that new good habit so make it ride along something else which you are already doing are you already doing pranayam then make your yoga asan practice come right after your pranayam 
some of us are not doing pranayam many of us will not be familiar with breathing practices no problem you get up in the morning and brush your teeth great after that put in a few minutes of pranayam or your exercise or yoga and once you've gotten up in the morning taking care of your bathroom chores after that make sure you make your new habit ride along with something which you do every day fix a time slot that's very very essential because without that the first step about clarity it just stays on paper it's just something theoretical all right so these were two points i thought i should discuss before plunging ahead into the others all the other points hopefully students those of you who have shared them on the chat box you will find as we go along it gets answered if it doesn't please ask it again towards the end of the session so there was another thing i wanted to mention on the slide we need to remember something very crucial students when we talk of changing habits most of us have this thinking even i did initially that it's all about will power it's like we say in hindi you know mujhe karna hi hai and i do it every day i push myself to exercise or wake up at a certain time after a while you realize that's not the smartest way that's as if somebody is reluctant and you're binding that person in ropes and chains and pulling that person forward by force no persuade that person let him or her walk on his own two feet so it's not only about will power will power does have a role but it's a small role so please understand whatever i'm sharing with you i call them mind hacks these are ways to get your mind to agree to do what you anyway need to do and you may say who's the you who's the mind I, am i not the mind no you are not the mind you are not even the intellect but for now we are saying intellect as something that is above the mind above meaning not in a literal sense of course in a figurative sense someone that rules over the mind so think of the mind as the reins that hold the chariot horses and the horses are your sense organs your eyes your ears your tongue that says i want to eat this i want to watch this i want to hear this and your mind stands for the reins but there's an intellect who's a charioteer who holds in his or her hands the whole reins of the horses and decides which way things should go so please understand it's not a battle it's not only about will power because if you make it into a battle students we end up using the battle after a point of time many of us would have experienced in fact how many of us have found this let me ask you all you start something something new something good you do it for a few days and then you are stopping you stop just type yes in the chat box if that applies to you i'll repeat the question how many of us have found this experience that you start off a new good habit but after a while you are not able to sustain it it could be anything getting up early in the morning exercising okay so i can see i think a lot of yeses are beginning to come up in the chat box see that's because we are using only our will power you are not wrong this is how we are trained most of us hear about it but now i'm giving you some mind hacks so that is not only about the battle of wills it's much better than that much easier than that and students even before getting into the guidelines right now i want you to take a few moments please identify what is your mental fix for some people it's gaming for somebody it's instagram for somebody it's netflix for somebody it's anything on social media for someone else i know um, i was giving some advice recently i was doing a training session for corporates someone was trying to come out of the smoking addiction so different people have different fixes and finally you're going to find you use the fix irrespective of your mood like for me it used to be chocolates and that's one of the things i'll share with you all i'm not embarrassed to share that for years and decades for me chocolate was like a food group it wasn't just a food it was basically a category of food by itself and at any time if you walked into my home and opened my fridge you would find different categories of chocolates different manufacturers different kinds different countries of origin it was all there and finally again i found that when i'm happy i like to celebrate with chocolates when i was sad it was chocolates which helped me improve my mood when i was angry about something again it was a bit of chocolate that helped help me feel better if i was stressed about something bored for everything that had become the go to solution how darn silly is that and when you hear me tell you in your mind you're thinking yeah that's really silly and yet when we all have our fixes whatever be your fix it could even be a person all right it could be a person it could be an activity it could be an object it can be anything please identify what is your fix and i'm 
use the word here mental fix it can even be something physical i know people unfortunately i've met a few people it's very very sad they indulge in what's called a self harm something that should never be done because you are setting yourself back karmically when you do that one person i talked to she told me ma'am this is the only way that i can take myself away from a bigger pain so with a lot of counseling lot of therapy lot of talking we were able to bring her out of that mind state but the point is the first thing is to know that this is a fix it's like how when someone takes a drug that person starts off for whatever reason and then before you know it that fix has taken prime spot so don't worry i'm not going to ask you to put up on the chat box what is your fix you just identify it in your mind for now so let's get into the guidelines the first thing that we ask ourselves is why we do what we do for anything in life we need to ask ourselves this question why are we doing what we are doing and why do we not do what we do so like i shared in my own case when i used to turn to chocolates in fact the first part of the pandemic i found my chocolate consumption had gone up and it took me a few weeks not a few days but a few weeks to see that and say okay something seems to be wrong and i asked myself why i was doing that the answer is out of a sense of fear because everything around was changing so rapidly i was not able to get a grasp on the situation different people were reacting differently so i'll share with you what i did later but for now you need to know just like a tree has got very deep roots and if you want to address let's say here you have yellow leaves or the branches and the leaves they look they are dying you don't address it from here you address it from the roots similarly the first step for changing any habit is ask yourself why you do what you do you're going to be discovering what seems as a certain habit has got its roots elsewhere i'll give you one example a student i was talking to told me ma'am i want to change my habit of getting angry very fast when i asked him why do you get angry he said because people around don't seem to have their priorities right meet my family members meet people outside i asked him then why do you get angry with your family when they don't seem to have their priorities right he said because if they do the wrong things we are going to suffer now i asked him why to that question maybe four or five times and it emerged that boy didn't have a father he had to take the family's financial responsibility to, at a very young age basically for his mind it was fear which was causing him to react with anger any time his younger brother did something wrong any time his mother did some overspending somewhere it was essentially fear of survival so once i helped him see that that the root cause of your anger is not anger it is fear he could now change his in first statement that the habit which i need to drop is not about anger it's about getting rid of my fear so that's why this first step is very crucial students the second your strategy is going to change based on whether you're bringing in a new good habit or you're dropping an old bad habit therefore if you want to bring in a good habit and this is where all those of you have talked about exercise and getting up early in the morning your answers come in first is visualize the benefits and second is use an existing habit as a launch pad so i remember when i started with my pranayam practice which was a few uh, more than a few years more than a decade and a half or so back i began by saying that i can only do it in the morning if i try to keep it for the evening it's not going to happen so you carve out a time so what was if something i was doing every day i would get up brush my teeth etc and then after a while have a cup of tea i said before the cup of tea after my brushing insert pranayam so you all are engineering students you can think logically insert the activity into your daily schedule put it on paper initially it's okay if it stays on paper for a while but at least get it on paper if you use mobile alarms use mobile alarms but then don't be like those people who put in multiple alarms i know a lot of students if they have to get up at 6:30 they'll start putting alarms 6 o'clock 6:05 6:10 and then snooze 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 so don't use alarms that way and of course like we said sometime back visualize the benefits think like a businessman think like an entrepreneur ask yourself what are the benefits and you're going to find that there are huge benefits so like suppose you want to do pranayam you find that a calmness that comes to you your mental strength the mental resilience the emotional strength that comes is unparalleled and you might think oh my god to be a pranayam means like i have to be like some yogi sitting in the caves in the himalayas doing om jap no 
Five minutes a day of alternate nostril breathing can keep you in better energy and fitness for all your online classes. And you might say, ha, who bothers about the online classes? I hope you don't say that, but even if you do, at the end of the day, you need to go for your internships and jobs. Your degree is not the end of your life's journey. It's just your passport to a better life. Your learning doesn't stop here. And what is your greatest strength? Your greatest ally? Your mind. So if five minutes of pranayam can help you use your mind better and using your mind better, you become more successful. A smart student will say, let me invest those five minutes. The next thing, this is the tougher one. What happens when we want to remove bad habits? The first is we need to understand that suppose you enter into a dark room, like I'm showing you here in this picture, and I tell you, how do you make the room bright? You don't take a broom and start sweeping away darkness. The same way to drop a bad habit, you don't just remove what is wrong, you bring in what is good. You bring in light to remove darkness. So bring in substitutes to remove what you don't like. So I was just telling you about this person I know in his mid thirties who wanted to give up smoking. And I said, how about bringing in something healthier to eat? In my case, I'll share with you what I started using in place of chocolates, although it's, uh, the mind will say it's not a good enough option. So I don't know if you can make out. I'm holding a bottle in front of the camera. This has got soft. This is also known as bunny shapes. So this is something which is called fennel. In English, we call it fennel. And for the sweet kick, I have a little bottle where I store mishri. So these little cubes, which are cooling, and this is the crystallized uh, form, not the refined form. So the refined one has got a lot of chemicals, etc. But this one is actually cooling. It's relatively therapeutic, provided you take it in small quantities. So when the brain craves for that sugar hit after a meal, and I know I'm not going to have the chocolate, I have my substitutes in place. So that part of my mind feels soothed that, yes, I'm getting something sweet. My tongue is happy. At the same time, I'm not causing damage to my body. So students, you have to be ready with your good substitutes the moment you want to drop something. All those of you, therefore, who said you want to reduce social media addiction, you want to reduce gaming, you want to reduce mobile usage. My question to you will be, what substitute are you going to bring in? I'll share with you one more example from my own personal experience of last year. So like I was saying, in this phase of uh, maybe May, June, when we were well into the pandemic and the lockdown, we knew it was not going to get over anytime soon. Many of us got into Netflix and I was a relative newbie because I never had the time to get into it. So I said, okay, let's check out things and see. And then some people started giving me recommendations and they said, ma'am, you should watch this, you should watch that. And before I knew it, I was big time into looking at things from this country, that country, et cetera. And I was like, wow, it's like a child being taken to a, a candy store or a toy shop and suddenly you have so many options. And within a few days, I realized what's happening to my mind. I'm going on looking for what next on my laptop or my mobile screen. And that's not good. And I said, okay, Pia, this is getting too much. This is getting dangerous. So what do we do? I wanted to bring in a substitute. Now I happen to be a reader at any given point of time next to me, wherever I am, there will be a few books. I said, let's increase my reading habit because that's something that gives you joy, that brings mental peace, that expands your sense of thinking. So I'll share with you one of the readers that I got back to after a long, long time. If you can see this on camera. So Wilbur Smith is this author who writes very evocatively about South Africa. If you can see the size and thickness of this volume, I picked it up after almost, I think, 15 years or so. I said nothing better than this to sink my teeth into it. Because what happens is when you start watching things, when you're binge watching anything, your mind gets absorbed. And when you want to bring in a substitute, that substitute has to be equally intellectually absorbing. It has to be able to grasp you the same way. Now, it can't grasp your hearing because on screen, you have the visual and the hearing. Thankfully, you don't have touch and taste and smell as of now. The book can at least substitute for the visual. You can at least read. And someone like me, I enjoy reading a lot. I've always enjoyed reading. I said, come on, this is the right substitute for me. Now, for everybody, this may not work. You may not like reading. You may not enjoy the same things you do. So try music. Try a small mental fix of doing five minutes of really brisk breathing. 
check it out and see. Try a bhastrika or an ujjayi or a kapal bhati at the time when you feel restless and bored and you're craving to do something like gaming, etc. Because those are energizing styles of pranayam. Just like anulom vilom and alternate nostril is calming, you have the energizing things as well. So students, my question to you is, what substitute are you going to use when you want to drop a bad habit? Be very sure of having the substitute in place. Without this, our plans are going to be doomed to failure in the short run. In the long run, we may succeed by a combination of different things, but it's very frustrating for us because short run we falter. And then many of us in the short run, when we don't get success, we drop out of the race, the journey. We don't even try to change our habits. The next thing, the moment you have the temptation thought in your mind, try and catch it there, but don't judge yourself. Somebody recently was talking to me, a very bright young girl around 19, 20 years of age. And at some point of the conversation, she said, you know, ma'am, there are times I really don't feel good about who I am. And I was zapped to hear that because she's one of the nicest people I know. I said, why do you think so? She said, you know, I get all kinds of thoughts, bizarre thoughts. So I laughed and said, 60,000 thoughts in a day. Obviously, there are going to be some which are freaky, some which are going to be crazy. Where do you think all the internet memes come from? If any of you are into memes, you know that those are very intelligent minds getting channelized in a certain direction. So if you think you're strange, you're eccentric, you're quirky, that's normal. Don't judge yourself. Even if you have thoughts which are negative, don't judge yourself. That is normal too. Even if you have thoughts which are harsh, which are not very good towards yourself or others, again, please understand that's simply a part of you that is the surface emotion of who you are. It's not the essential you. It's not the core you. Don't judge yourself. You have to first learn to be kind to yourself before you start trying to change your habits. If you think you're a flawed person, and therefore need to change your habits to become unflawed, that's mistaken thinking. If anyone has told you that, please discard it. We are not flawed people. We are beautiful human beings. We are fine human beings the way we are. Yes, we have certain aspects of our lives and personalities which need some tweaking here and there. So the Japanese have this term kintsugi, kintsukurai, where if a little pot is broken, they'll mend the cracks with gold dust so that those cracks are highlighted so that they say that, look, this is not a perfect place with no cracks, but the cracks are what make it unique and that's why it's filled with gold dust. So they're shining and they're gleaming and it is the cracks which make the pot then very valuable. That's exactly what it is for us. Every tear that you have shed, every moment of pain you have endured doesn't make you a flawed person. It makes you more beautiful, it makes you wiser, it makes you stronger, it makes you more compassionate. And it adds your value and worth in the world because now you have gone through a certain process and you can therefore help someone else. So never judge yourself when you're trying to change your habits. This is a guideline. Personally, I find this very useful. In the old days, if you have ever seen a lot of temples, particularly in the southern parts of India, I've seen this. Outside homes and temples, you have what's called a Dwar Pal meaning the doorkeeper. So in the old days, let's say there was a king in a kingdom and you have a big palace. Uh, you will have the people outside, the guards outside, the dwarpal outside, who will stand at attention at all times. And the moment somebody tries to walk into the door, they are going to gauge, is he a friend or is he an enemy? If he is a friend, roll out the red carpet, let the person go in. If the person is an enemy, either the person is pushed away from there or the person is trussed up completely and taken inside along with other guards and presented in front of the king. The same way your mental doorkeeper happens to be your intellect. Train your intellect to catch your mind as the mind throws up thoughts. Every thought being thrown up is like a person coming to your mental kingdom. It could be a good thought, a bad thought. It could be a helpful thought, a not so helpful thought. What am I going to do about my life? Anxiety, what am I going to do about my life? Let me do something good, a positive thought. Let your intellect bring in with a welcome, the good ones, and let your intellect analyze, scrutinize, tie up the ones which are not so good so that as it arises, you're able to tackle it. I'll give you an example to illustrate. Again, this is from my last year's own experience. 
at the time when I was watching some Netflix, etc., I found that if I had had a long day, there would be automatically a thought in my mind, oh, today has been a really long day. Today I deserve some Netflix. Let's sit down and watch so-and-so program or so-and-so series. On a day which was, let's say, not a very happy day, something stressful happened or something that was not so good happened, again, I would find the mind throwing up the thought that, oh, you know, today I've had some stress. Let me soothe my mind this way. And on a day when something went beautifully, that day the thought which would pop up would be, today everything has gone nicely. Let's celebrate. By doing what? By watching Netflix. Now, the moment your intellect is trained like a good doorkeeper, he or she will catch the thought and say, aha, got you. Now, I'm not saying, please note that you don't watch the Netflix. I'm simply saying you train your intellect to catch the thought as it arises. Because the next thing you know, otherwise, the thought has entered the mind fully. And it looks like a very legitimate inhabitant of the place. It's not. It's a visitor. A thought in your mind is a visitor. Whether you want to entertain the thought or not is up to you. If you want to entertain a good thought, great. If you don't want to, it should be your choice. For you to exercise the choice, the intellect has to be strong. And each time you actually listen to the intellect, you're actually strengthening your mind. You are creating new neural networks. Students, I'm not going to take you into the neuroscience of it, but I'll just share with you very briefly, whatever I'm sharing right now is based on two sources, extremely credible sources. One is the Western science, the cognitive neuroscience. The second is Indian scriptures, what we call the Shastras. So as a student of Vedant, where we learn these in the various Upanishads, we learn them in the various other texts which come after the Upanishads, we're taught in great details about the mind and the intellect and the role when it comes to changing habits, which is why I told you all in the beginning, it's not a battle of wills. It's smarter than that. This is a lovely analogy I want to share with you all. If you have ever seen anybody around having a tantrum, if you've ever been to a shop or a mall and seen a small child throwing a tantrum, where I want a toy or I want this candy, you'll find parents come in multiple categories. One type of parent will give in and say, say no, it's okay, Wo to bacha hai, bacha ho raha hai. so let's give him the chocolate or the toy. Now that is self-indulgence. And if the intellect does that with the mind, there's a problem. The second kind of parent says, Thapad, how dare you? Rona nahi hai, chocolate is bad for your teeth. Now that is also suppressing the mind and after a mind that after a while the mind is going to rebel. So we don't do that. The third kind of parent is very wise. He or she will simply hold the child in a loving embrace or a cuddle and say, oh, you're feeling bad? Oh, that's so sorry. I'm so sorry to hear that. That's such a pity. You're feeling like crying. Oh, you're feeling angry. Okay, okay. You're feeling frustrated. And will give a hug, will soothe the child. That parent will neither slap the child or scold the child nor give in to the child, but will simply validate the emotion, will simply tell the child that, okay, I understand, I empathize, I get what you're feeling. Students, we need to treat our minds the same way this wise parent treats the small child who's having a tantrum. Our minds are like that small child. So the next time you find your mind is craving for something, really, really craving, get your intellect to say, oh, okay, this is what you're feeling, huh? Ah, interesting. Really, really interesting. It's a little bad that, you know, I feel bad that this is what you're feeling. But you know what? We've made a decision. Let's say in my case, I'd say no chocolates for seven days or 15 days or whatever. So it's, it's a little sad you're feeling this way. What can we do? Can we help you in some way? Uh, can we just have a small glass of water perhaps and just sip it nicely, calmly, maybe stand near the window, look outside, look at the blue sky, look at the trees, distract your mind for a while, breathe in deep, do a little bit of home chanting for 60 seconds. The mind may still resist, no, I want my chocolate fix. The intellect says, oh, you're still feeling bad. Huh? This is a really bad craving today. The mind says, yes, it's really bad. I want it now. The intellect says, ah, oh, I can see I wonder why today you have such an intense craving. The mind says, yes, I've had a really lousy day. Can I please have a square of chocolate today? The intellect says, my gosh, I feel so sorry for you. Come, let me give you a hug. Let me do an 
obviously you can imagine when i'm telling you these things all this is at the figurative level within a few moments you realize the mind quietens down the way a child quietens down and within a few seconds you find you're out of that phase of craving craving does not last long mentally and physiologically cravings don't last long you have to learn to ride it out but ride it out with love don't ride it out with what i call the thappad approach that can cause a lot of harm we won't get into it ride it out very lovingly and patiently that oh this is what you're feeling gosh that's a really strong craving today that's come up in the mind you're going to feel proud about yourself when you ride it out it's okay to feel this way validate validate what your mind is feeling and do it genuinely and you're going to find you're just going across that wave of emotion and that's it you're on the other side you're quite safe now let's say we have not succeeded let's say we wanted to give in to something and we have given it one mistake we make is then going all up so suppose let's say i again share my example let's say i have decided like i have a rule i don't watch anything on social media in fact i will not even check facebook whatsapp etc uh through the whole week i'll do it only for a few hours uh, over the weekend let's say for some reason on a public holiday during the week i decided to watch now what happens i might say okay i've broken the rule chalo this week let's keep the rules aside so the, for the whole week the rules are off or for the whole month the rules are off now that's a problem so what we do is we build a fence we say okay i got a little bit delayed but let's bring ourselves back on track today i'm watching two hours extra i'll make sure that in the weekend i don't watch maybe any netflix at all so that way you're again telling the mind once in a while you've indulged it's okay not a problem you're not a bad person because of that but compensate so make a fence and limit the quantity this is true for anything those of us who have ever had binge eating i know a student who used to eat maggi noodles when she was stressed and if you talk to her she is this bright very nice very bubbly very intelligent person now she is working of course in an mnc doing fabulously well she shared with me that whenever she would have some trouble she would have maggi noodles when i asked her why she said that's the only way that she would do what is called as self soothing i asked her how do you feel about it the next day she said horrible because all those chemicals of the maggi doesn't help the maida doesn't help so the next day i'm hating myself i said okay let's try and figure out a way for you to not hate yourself so i said the first thing you do ask her how many packets do you consume she said she said when i'm really upset if i had a fight with my hostelite roommate she was a hostelite at that time she said i'll have four or five packets in one go i said next time do me a favor just for my sake try and cut it down to half so instead of four have maybe two she said okay done that i can do so she did this for a few weeks and she came back and said okay now it's better my system can take it better next time i'm not feeling as bad so i said first thing is build a fence then i asked her okay after this how do you make it zero for which we help with the initial guideline that we talked about some time back that you bring in better substitutes so in her case we said pranayam healthy eating and she was a very uh, physically sporty athletic kind of person so we said how about going out and actually going out for a run for a small jog etc that worked beautifully and every time she would feel upset and agitated every time she'd have a fight with a best friend or a roommate or something instead of having maggi noodles she decided to do something else which was healthier so a combination of initial ring fencing along with substitutes that is what really worked beautifully for her now this is again a very smart mind hack that i want to share with you which worked particularly well for me when i was wanting to give up chocolates and my morning tea so early morning cup of tea when i wanted to give that up because that's not supposed to be good for health it creates acidity in the system you learn to cultivate repulsion for what is bad for you and cultivate attraction for what is good similarly when i was speaking to this gentleman in his mid 30s and he wanted to give up cigarettes i told him that have a nice big color print out of damaged lungs in fact he did that on his own and he showed that at one point of time and i said don't the cigarette packets also have that he said yes ma'am they do but a cigarette packet is so small you can just hide that in your pocket and you can take out a cigarette without looking at that picture so it doesn't work so i said okay see our minds are so smart right learn to cultivate repulsion for what you want to drop and cultivate attraction for what you want to gain 
So when I wanted to drop chocolates, I started reading on how cocoa laborers are treated like literally bonded labor, like slaves. If you've read about it in Africa, they're made to work in plantations where circumstances are really, really horrible. And it's like, if you've heard of blood diamonds, if you know the term blood diamonds, you'll understand what I'm talking about. It's something similar to chocolates. So when I wanted to drop chocolates as a major habit from my life, I started reading more and more on what these things are. You can read about sugar, you can read about fats. For me, those things didn't work. I'm a Bengali, okay? So for us, we don't have a sweet tooth. We have all 32 teeth as sweet. So there was something more I needed to read. So I read in depth and I found, okay, this is what happens when we are buying cocoa and then chocolate is getting made. Which means if you have to have chocolate, you'll have what's called as artisanal chocolates from plantations where you have more humane conditions. And those are very expensive. Those are hideously expensive. So automatically your wallet becomes a method by which you keep a little tab and a track on the kind of spending that you do for chocolates. But cultivating repulsion in the scriptures, this is called dosh drishti. This is very, very useful as a mind hack when you want to drop something bad. So let's say you want to come out of gaming or social media addiction. Read up on neuroscience. Watch Simon Sinek's videos where he talks about how dopamine is getting released in the brain every time you're gaining into social media. How dopamine is linked to addictions. It's a hormone which the brain releases and it needs more and more of that in order to create happiness. It's a happiness-related hormone. And then find out how you can have attraction for the good things. So part A is repulsion, part B is attraction. How do you bring in the attraction? Let's say I want to do exercise instead of binge watching or having chocolates. Now for five minutes of exercise, what should I do? Create the idea that even five minutes of, let's say, high intensity interval training, HIIT, is going to change my metabolism. It's going to give me longer telomeres at the end of my cells. Understand how the oxygenation gets my brain to work better. Understand how I can put in 12 hour days and still not feel tired at the end of it. Look at the gains of that and read more and more on that. So if I make a balance sheet on one side, the negatives I'm listing out very clearly. On the other side, the positives of what I want to do, I'm listing out very clearly. Doing these two parallelly is immensely useful when we want to change our habits. Let's go to the next mind hack. A common mistake which we make is, if I want to change my habits and get up at six o'clock or seven o'clock in the morning, and let's say now I get up at eight or nine, I'll say, Chalo, from tomorrow I'll get up at six. Does it work? For a few days. After that, I'm going to slide back. We make best as the enemy of good and better. If I get up at nine, let me try getting up at 8.30 and let me do that for a few weeks. Once 8.30 is comfortable, let me make it eight. Once that is comfortable, let me make it seven or whatever. That's what we mean by making tiny changes. So like in my case, when I want to do a sugar detox, if I tell myself, Pia, you can't eat sugars ever, my mind will be, ah, oh, really? Oh God, such a life is not worth living. You know how drama bars like our minds are, right? So our minds tend to exaggerate things. So if I tell myself, okay, just for today, you're not going to have sugary things. That is doable. In fact, in Reiki, I've done the first two levels of Reiki when we are trained by our Reiki teachers and masters. Our prayer is just for today, I will not have anger. Just for today, I will practice loving kindness. He said, just for today. We're not saying for seven days or a month or the year or the rest of our lives. No New Year resolutions, okay? Only for today, I will stay on the right track. And interestingly, students, if you make tiny changes on a daily basis, over a year, the compounding effect is enormous. Whereas when there are small changes towards the bad, towards the negative in our life, we are slipping, we are falling, we are letting ourselves succumb more and more to self-indulgence. Again, that has a chain reaction. So I'm sure you must have heard Einstein say that compounding is the eighth uh, natural wonder, so to speak, of the world and of the universe because compounding gives enormous results. Compounding for positive changes the trajectory of our life. Compounding in the negative direction brings us down completely. Choice is always with us. Make tiny changes, students. You don't have to start making massive changes overnight. Chota chota, small changes. Just be consistent. Tiny consistent changes over a period of time that builds up to something enormous. Before you know it, you look back, you say, wow, really? And you pat yourself on the back because you're so happy you've been able to do that. 
trust me, I'm speaking from experience. <laughs> this is again a very useful mind hack. Learn to keep good things around you, talk to good friends, read good things. Surround your senses with what is beneficial to you. Don't surround your senses with what is harmful. So for example, if you have certain apps on your phone and you know those apps are a drain of time, delete those apps. For example, I'll never have Facebook on my phone and Instagram, oh my God, using Instagram is like falling down the rabbit hole like Alice in Wonderland. Your time just goes away. You think you are going to be on Insta for your feed for 10 minutes, 15 minutes, just to scroll through quickly and see what others have posted. And the next thing you know, you're laughing over a meme. You're chuckling over something somebody has said. You got some stupid GIF which you're forwarding now to other people you're sharing with them. And you're thinking, okay, can I also make such memes? And two hours have gone by. And you don't know how those two hours have gone. So get smart. In the early stages of trying to change your habits, don't have those visual cues around you. Remove them from your environment as much as possible. So like in my case, when I was trying to reduce chocolates, I did one simple thing. Whatever I kept, I, did, I didn't totally give up at that point of time. Now I have, but when I was initially changing the habit, I'd wrap it up in brown colored paper and keep it in a very inaccessible part of the fridge so that it was not visible. So on the days when my mind was like, really, I want a square of chocolate, I knew it was there, but it's not seeing me every time I open the fridge door and looking at me and saying, hey, Pia, here am I waiting for you. So every time I'm not battling with my willpower to say, okay, that's a chocolate, but it's bad for me, I'm not going to eat it. Now that's plain stupid. Get smart, remove the visual cues, use your senses right. Extremely helpful to get support from family and friends. Whatever habit you're trying to change, enlist them as your coach, particularly those of you who've got younger siblings. Even more than older siblings, if you've got younger siblings, they're going to love to play coach for you and play the role of policeman or policewoman and tell them, I'm trying to change this habit. Will you please help me? See the enthusiasm and alacrity with which they jump up to that. It really helps. Students, trust me, this really, really helps. And having a support system around makes it easier for you. You also learn to become less inhibited, less self-conscious. You learn that all of us are in this together and no human being is perfect. And yet every human being is beautiful just the way he or she is. As we move towards the end, very important for us to remember, be patient with yourself. Because time and time again, this happens. We get frustrated with ourselves. Every human being is going to get frustrated unless you're one of those exceptional blooming geniuses. This is going to happen when you're trying to change your habits. We will lapse. We will get derailed from our tracks. That's okay. Learn to accept yourself and know that there's nothing wrong with your brain wiring. And therefore, the flip side, appreciate yourself for every day that you make progress. Forget day. Even if, let's say, you're dealing with maybe an anger issue and you have managed for half a day not to get angry when usually you're, you've got a hair trigger sort of thing for anger, pat yourself for the progress. Every tiny millimeter of progress is progress. Grant yourself that. Understand that and capture that. So it's like how you train a little puppy. If you're trying to pull the puppy back from the road, you don't hit it and thwack it and say, if you go on the road, the car is going to run over you. You pull it back and say, good dog, good puppy, come here, see, you're going to get a nice little toy to play with, come here, this is the right place for you to play. There's the same thing we do with our minds, because our minds are going to be like that untrained puppy. The intellect is the trainer of that puppy, just be aware. So as we reach the conclusion, like we said sometime back, consistency is really the key over here. Whatever we do, let it be a tiny step. If we can do it regularly, if not for the whole week, two days a week, three days a week, and we keep on doing it for a few weeks, you see the changes that start happening in your life. You're actually making new neural networks. Time won't let us get into the details of the neuroscience here. You can always Google it up. You can always read up on it. Every time you reinforce a good habit, you're actually building a new neural system. So the word in the scripture, samskara, is related to nothing but a reinforced good habit, which is consciously and deliberately repeated. So the key is consistency. Don't go for too many changes at a time, students. Choose one or two things that you want to change and work with that. Don't waste time 
feeling worried, dejected, disappointed with yourself or judging yourself and you get derailed. Derailments will happen. We will get thrown off track. For example, I'll share with you my own example. I have uh, a list that I follow every day, like my pranayam, yoga, and some uh, walking, etc. Now, there will be days when out of four or five things, I can do three. That's okay. I keep track of it. The days when I get four or five, I give myself a star and a smiley in my diary. But the days when I don't, that's also okay. It's absolutely fine because there would be a reason why. That I've tried, but I was not able to do it. Just get back on track. The focus is get back on track. Today, I wasn't able to do my work. No problem. Tomorrow, I will do it. Hold that thought in your head. Don't say, ah, I am like this only. I've heard so many young people who are cynical by the time they step into their 20s. And you want to tell them, you've got your whole life ahead of you, buddy. Don't waste time on being cynical. Take it as someone who's been there and done that. You can't live your life hiding behind sign bags of that cynicism defense. You have to allow yourself to be vulnerable. You have to allow yourself to fall. And then you learn to rise every time you fall. Just get back on track. So that's why we say that essentially it is our habits which decide our futures. In fact, the Brihad Aranyaka Upanishad has a beautiful statement that describes this. It says that it starts off with our thought. Our thoughts leading to words, words leading to actions, actions lead to habits. Habits are going to determine our characters and characters determine our destinies. And this is an oft-quoted quotation. And we all understand, therefore, the correlation between thought and our destinies. It starts with the thought, which is why we said today, I'm describing to you mind hacks. It's all about the mind. Even at the physical level, when you want to change habit, it all starts with the mind. Do not ever compare yourself with anybody else in this journey. Not your siblings, not your best friend, not the most popular boy or girl in class, not what the teacher told you to do, not what I'm telling you to do. Just compare yourself to what you were yesterday and what you are today. That's the main thing. It does not matter how you measure up against other people. What matters is, am I getting to be better than who I was before? If yes, Pat yourself. Applaud for yourself. You deserve it. And doesn't matter if the rest of the world can't see it. Sometimes it takes a while for the world to wake up. That's okay. That's perfectly fine. Compare yourself to only yourself. Be a better you today than what you were yesterday. So on that note, thank you so, so much for your patient students. We've got an amazing group. Okay, I can see we have 140 participants. Wow, that's amazing. That's pretty, pretty amazing. Thank you for staying for such a long time for the session. Let me just do the stop share and I'm going to come out of the slide share mode. So let me just get into the normal view. And this is the time we open up the floor for questions. So if you have questions, the chat box. Yes, Sumed, what you've put up is very, very wise. Absolutely. So Sumed, uh, I, I think the others have read what he has written in the chat that it doesn't happen in a day, change takes time and patience. Absolutely. Well said, Sumit. Good. Uh, yes, Ashutosh, you're right. Doing something for seven days helps. Ashutosh, you've raised a very interesting point. So I remember when I learned my art of living, uh, the Sudarshan Kriya, we were told that if you do something for 21 days, you can build a habit. Please note, students, that is not always true. You can do something for seven days, 21 days, it may or may not stay with you. For different people, different things apply. So don't take it as something written on rock, the holy grail that, yes, if I do it for 21 days, I'm all good. That's not how it works. Certain things you do like this, at the snap of a finger, you can change certain habits. When I stopped having sugar in my tea, it was an overnight thing. But for me, stopping chocolates was not overnight. Coming out of Netflix took even longer. And that's the reason why today what I shared, I'm not embarrassed to share so many things from my own experience because I want you to understand this is not theory that I'm preaching. This is not prachar. This is achar and vichar. I've thought about it. I've practiced it. And then I'm correlating with neuroscience and with the scriptures and sharing what works. So, yes, yes. Parsh, what you've put it is right. 21 days does help because there is a science to 21, but even 21 may not be enough. That's what I'm trying to say. And if it is not, don't say, oh my God, I must be having a really slow brain. Ma'am had said 21 days. How come for me after 21 days also it's still not working? 
it's not so simple as that which is why i said any formula anybody gives you take it and then adapt it for yourself okay so let's come to the questions okay sakshi you have asked something uh, i really appreciate your honesty sakshi this is something many people will be having as a common question but thanks for raising it in a common forum forgiving and forgetting and that leading to overthinking when you can't do that then what happens so sakshi the first thing is to understand forgiving part may still happen easily forgetting is difficult in the early days like when i was of your age when i was a college student and a young adult stepping into my adulthood forgiving also was difficult for me because there is to be a lot of anger in me for various reasons my life circumstances many other reasons it took me a while to understand that the first person towards whom we need to practice kindness is ourselves and i don't mean that in a selfish way or a narcissistic way simply to mean that whatever reason you have for being angry at somebody first grant yourself that reason maybe you were hurt because of a friend's behavior or a sibling said something nasty to you or whatever it be grant yourself that that's the first thing you need to address the next thing is ask yourself why you are reacting with anger like in my case when that was happening to me i went to the root and i discovered like i shared with you all another students example also it was fear fear was getting expressed as anger loss of control insecurity in fact a lot of people i know who are angry are essentially people who have fear and insecurity it is insecurity which gets expressed as fear so when you feel that you are upset with somebody you are not able to forgive someone go to the root and ask yourself why if it is insecurity address that ask yourself in what way am i feeling diminished in what way am i feeling small because of what he or she has said or done or behaved in a certain way maybe the more you analyze yourself the more you get closure for this it's not about the other person it's about us in fact when you understand this it's like magic because you could be interacting with anybody and you'll find that you are at peace with yourself and therefore you are at peace with the person in front of you it starts with us which is what we don't understand so through our lives when we talk of life skills we are forever getting trained on how to interact with the world if the person in front of you is like this you behave in a certain way if the person is like this you behave in a certain way no one tells us first get comfortable with yourself own your skin be comfortable in your skin you will not need to remember so many formulae for people trust me it will happen instinctively you will know what to do your gut instinct and common sense will tell you what to do and you're going to be compassionate so sakshi to return to your question for forgiving analyze your own mind and you'll give yourself the validation that you need to feel that sense of injustice or hurt for forgetting allow time to work time plays its own role in putting a balm on your mind so what made you really annoyed and upset and agitated after a week it makes you less agitated after a month there's better comfort and after a year you may have forgotten about it and even if you don't forget that's still okay it's still okay please believe me with learning maturity and training what happens is it's like we just i showed you a picture the darkness goes away when the light comes in when in your mind you bring in more and more good things you'll find automatically our past hurts the grievances all those injuries of the mind that we've had right from childhood all of them kind of go away and they get pushed out after a while because the mind also has a certain capacity so if you want to push out the debris you put in good things clean things happy things bright things that will automatically push things out and this is a time consuming process it's a slow gradual process enjoy the process don't be in a hurry for it to happen don't be impatient but the forgiving thing that happens much sooner so that's a good question you asked sakshi thanks for asking that so let me just go ahead from here there are a lot of new messages coming up okay let me just uh, backtrack a little bit i'm just going to enlarge the chat box and see gautam uh, that's a great question you asked who's going to be your trainer the answer is your intellect that's a fantastic question you asked gautam <laughs> so it makes a big difference when you start off with that thought yes it will be you yourself who will be your best trainer you will have teachers of course along the way it is said in the scriptures and it's been my experience too you get the teacher when the time is right and for everything in life you will get somebody to guide you at the right time till such time be patient keep reading keep observing keep learning 
Okay, so let me just go ahead from there. Anupama, you've talked about uh, binge watching. Yes. So Anupama, what I would suggest to you is something that we've discovered uh, and discussed some time back. Yes, you're right. It's not like smoking. It doesn't affect you at a physical level. But I would say brain getting hijacked is also very dangerous. I'll tell you why. With cigarettes or with anything physical, it's happening at the gross body level. You can actually measure, you can quantify. So for example, this person that I was talking to who eventually gave up cigarettes, he knew he was having eight cigarettes a day. Whereas when we are binge watching, we only know the number of hours. We don't know the impact it's having on our heads. Just like a smoker doesn't know the impact it has on the lungs, but it can still be seen in an X-ray. For the mind, there is no X-ray which can tell you by how much has your mind become dull, by how much degree has your mind become less creative, less agile, more tired, more fatigued, more saturated. How many of you have found that after binge watching, your brain is still in that space, that very hazy space? I know a student who has watched over 45 K dramas in a span of, I think, two months or so. And at the end of it, I asked her, do you even remember anything from it? And she laughed and said, no, ma'am, it's all like a jumble, a mosaic in my head. So I said, why did you do it? She said, it was like a rush. So I could get that. It's like how, how we ride roller coasters like children. You know, you are screaming, yay, and you're afraid also, but you're doing it also. So it's a little bit like that. So to come back to your question, Anupama, bring in substitutes because binge watching means your brain is already used to the dopamine fix you're going to need a substitute dopamine fix, which is not easy. Bring in something healthy. Check what works for you. Is it reading? Is it music? A lot of young people I know have used music in order to change their binge watching habits. Uh, if you're into breathing practices, I'll strongly suggest pranayam. Even 60 seconds of pranayam can make you come out of that desire to get into the next whatever thing that you're binge watching. Believe me when I say even 60 seconds, because what that does is it changes the circuitry. Your cortisol and adrenaline that's flowing a certain way, it calms it down. The dopamine, which is all geared up for a certain kind of hit, now suddenly it's taken by surprise because you're giving it something great, which is more oxygen. So Anupama, ring fence. My second suggestion to you is make a ring fence. If you do sit down, tell yourself, I don't want to mess with my hormones by sitting up late at night. My endocrine system goes out of whack. Insulin, leptin, ghrelin, melatonin, everything goes out of whack when I'm watching till late. I don't want it to affect my body. So I'm not going to sit up beyond whatever. You decide your time. It's not my job to give you the gyan to say, okay, put it off by whatever PM. Ideally, scientists tell us no screens after nine. Now I myself can't finish my work. There are times when I can't finish it by nine in the night because there are times there are webinars, there are so many things. I'm watching US webinars which start at a different time altogether. So I know that's difficult. But create a ring fence and make these exceptions. The body has to be respected. The mind has to be respected. The brain has to be respected. So the third guideline I would suggest, Anupama, read up on neuroscience. Understand what happens when we binge watch. The more we understand, the easier it is, it is to come out of it. And the less the mind will crave it, because now you know, it's like that small child who's throwing a tantrum in a candy shop, telling the parent, I want to buy five chocolates or 10 chocolates. And you know, as a grown up, that no, five or 10 chocolates are not good for the child. So read up about it, get more knowledge about it, create a fence, create a boundary, and keep substitutes ready. Like on the days when my mind is craving to watch something on the electronic media, but I know I'm not going to do it, I keep next to me a whole set of books. So I'll just show you if you can see on camera. So these are multiple books I have. Now, most of the ones I'm showing you right now, these are spirituality based. But like I showed you the Wilbur Smith sometime back, I have a range. There'll be fiction, non-fiction. In fiction, there is the intense reading. There is a light reading. Based on my mood, I have a buffet table next to me of books. I'll decide what to pick up. So even when the mind is throwing up the tantrum, the intellect is taking the mind very gently by the hand and saying, see, look, there are five, six books here. Which one do you feel like reading today? The mind says, okay, chalo, okay, I'll read this book today. So get smart. Get smart with the strategies for the mind. I trust that answers your question, Anupama. Thanks for asking. Uh, Bhairavi, yes, losing motivation can happen. And this is not only for you, this is for everybody, being patient for oneself, staying true to one's goals. That's a beautiful question, Bhairavi, that you've asked. For this, the answer is, have a dream. 
and then make your goal. Most of us make goals which are very practical, but they're very dry. They don't make us happy. For a goal to make you happy, it has to be linked to a bigger dream. Now, what's the difference between a dream and a goal? A dream is unrealistic. A dream is crazy. A dream is like, I want to see 80 countries and travel and go backpacking once the pandemic is over and I want to experience this and I want to eat that food and I want to learn this and I want to learn to play a musical instrument. Those are dreams. Goal is in the next three years, I will visit these, these places. Goal is I will earn so-and-so amount of money and have that in my bank account. Goal is pragmatic. Dream is unrealistic and crazy. But the dream is the root for the goal. Have dreams. Dreams keep us motivated. Goals are not enough to keep us motivated by the way. So thanks for asking that question. I'm sure this applies not just to you, but for others as well. Sit down every day in the morning for a few minutes and visualize your dream coming true. Ask yourself firstly, what are your dreams? And see that happening. Then when you sit down for your online classes, you can link it to your goals. A goal is short term. Dream is long term. A dream has to have the element of madness and craziness in it. It should be such that if you tell your friends about it, they'll say, hey, pagal hai kya? you can't do that. That's the dream. So that's why don't go around telling your dream to everybody, okay? Because dreams are precious. They're meant to be held in your heart. They're meant to be cherished. From the dreams, you make the goals. That's how you stay motivated because a dream is like a magnet. That is what pulls you forward. Gautam, you've asked another lovely follow-up question. What should be the tests for present moment consciousness? It'll simply be your mind, which is so soaked in whatever you're doing and experiencing in that moment that you're fully alive. Even as you breathe, you're aware of the inhale and the exhale. Even as you think, you're aware of the thought coming in and the thought leaving your mind. So your own mind becomes your best trainer and the tests also are that you're living much more fully. What you see, what you feel, what you experience, it's like in 3D. If you've been living in the 2D world until now, it all becomes 3D for you. So you don't need an outside person to tell you, although there are ways to figure out, for example, your concentration gets better, your focus gets better, you're more in the flow. So there's a book called Flow, Mihali Sidzen Mihali. If I'm not mistaken, that's how the name is pronounced. Check out this book called Flow. It costs some, I think, some 700, 800 bucks on Amazon. Buy the book if you can or download it on Kindle and read it. It will tell you a lot about the present moment consciousness. It's beautiful. And from the questions you're asking, usually I don't recommend that for students because it can be quite at a high level, but your questions definitely indicate you're thinking along that direction. So good going, Gautam. Good for you. Uh, thank you, ma'am. Ma'am, I Sorry. want uh, just ask one more thing. Uh, that uh, I want, I wanted to know that uh, the acts we f actually feel that emotions uh, take the control and the, of our actions, but uh, truly seeing uh, that actions and emotions go hand to hand with each other, and uh, by that's why by control means not controlling by regulating our actions we can regulate our emotion emotions too, which is Absolutely. more easier. So. But uh, for that, uh, that was the main thing because of which this present consciousness term I am that is stick into my mind for so long. Absolutely, Gautam. You said it. And in fact, it works both ways by regulating action. You can regulate emotion and emotions. Also, you can regulate to regulate actions. It works. It's a two way street. Simple thing, pranayam. Simple thing, forget pranayam, deep breathing. You're very upset about something. You decide to do just one inhale and exhale very consciously, very nicely. Hardly yeah. two seconds, you'll find that now your emotion is different. Does not mean that your sense of injustice has gone away. Maybe something got you angry. That intellectual feeling is still there, but the heat yeah. of the emotion has now gone. So your action, as you said very correctly, can regulate the emotion. And that is emotional maturity. In fact, when we talk of EQ, you must have heard of this term EQ. Yeah. So that is exactly how we practice EQ. So good going, Gautam. Good, good for you. And I'm Thank glad you. that at this stage you have these questions. In fact, all the questions, I just, this is why I love the visit interactions. The level of questions makes us so, so happy. So Yash, I'm coming to the next question. You talk about uh, paying you. attention in the lectures, affecting the learning. So Yash, your question is similar to what was asked by Bhairavi. This is again related to motivation. See, it doesn't matter if your lecture is in class or online. 
if you're daydreaming in class, it can happen even in class. It can happen even during the online classes. So one simple thing I can tell you is keep the camera on during classes. Initially, your professors will be very surprised, but then after a while, they'll know that you don't mind being on camera because you know that you're listening. On a more serious note, what I would suggest is ask yourself how your present degree is a milestone and a stepping stone for you in life to achieve your dreams. The greater clarity you have in that, the better motivation you will have when you're attending lectures, be it online or be it in the real world. See, there are subjects we like, subjects we don't like. I have studied BCom and then I did my MBA finance. During my BCom years, I was from NM Commerce and then uh, NMIMS, Narsimuji Institute. I had university level ranks, okay? But having said that, there were subjects that I just endured. I'm using the word endured as a very polite substitute for something far harsh in my mind. You just go through it because you have to go through it. But the point is, can you see how it is there to help you? So that is a training some of us do instinctively, some of us do because we are told. Figure out how that subject helps. Figure out how that particular topic helps. And yes, in the lecture, if you really want to be motivated, I can quickly share with you a few things to do. A, do some pre-reading. You know what topic is going to happen. First, go to, go to Google or Wiki, read up a little bit about it. B, if the topic is of your interest or even if it is not of your interest, do a small MOOCs course. Go to Coursera, go to Udemy. Do a little bit of learning. Engineering students, today you have the world in front of you when it comes to free material available to you online. That way you can correlate with what's happening in the class better and you can actually see what are the points being talked about. C, most important, ask yourself, how does this help you in future? What is the application? In what way is that concept helpful in industries? So I remember a student was once challenging me that, ma'am, how does trigonometry help us in life? We spend so much of time learning trigo and calculus and all. And then after a while, who cares? And this student was also an engineering student. He was in civil engineering. When I told him, you have to build a bridge, like a freeway over this, uh, let's say not the freeway, the whirly ceiling, which is on the sea. Are you going to sit down at the scale and take measurements? How are you going to make measurements and distances on the sea? You're going to use all your trigo formulae. So he scratched his head for a while and said, how, oh, ma'am, you're making a correct point. So I said, you'll realize everything as an application. Just because you're not told about the application in class, there's nothing stopping you from going out and finding out, right? It's up to you to do it. So what I will strongly suggest is look upon your lecture as an opportunity to make a better future for yourself, to learn something useful for your futures. Once you change your own thinking, you'll know what to do. Do you do pre-reading? Do you do an additional course? Do you go online and figure out some video to watch? There are excellent videos. For example, in physics, there's this person called Walter Levin, who just, uh, I think, retired very recently. Many of us might be familiar. If you watch some of his videos, I'm not a physics person myself, but I watch with open-mouthed attention because he's so good. So there's so much of joy in learning. Get that joy. Then when you sit for class, it will not seem tedious to you, and you'll be able to appreciate what the professor's trying to teach you. Okay, so I have another message from a student who's asked, how do I improve my verbal skills? So simple suggestion again, read more, practice more. If it's about English, start reading more and more of fiction, good quality fiction. I'm not going to name the authors because this particular session is getting recorded, but there are certain authors, you're better off not reading them. Read good authors, read good quality fiction. Listen to good TV programs which use the language, let's say in English, then watch some CNN, BBC perhaps, but then don't imitate their accents. Watch some good English programs made in India. That will tell you more about the Indian English. Most important, practice. So for verbal skills, nothing beats practice. Surround yourself with people who can give you feedback on where you need to improve and how to improve. That becomes the next step for learning. So the student who's asked me by direct message, I hope this answers your question. Rahul, you've asked about angry and being stressed, imagining scenarios. Yes, Rahul, this many of us do. We have a full Karan Johar movie playing inside our heads. You're not the only one. In fact, I know a lot of students who will actually imagine even dialogues that when you're angry and upset, you're going to think that, okay, best friend ke saath jhagda hua hai. Next time when I meet the person, this is what I say, this is what that person will say, et cetera, et cetera. Just cut that by saying, I'll save my drama for later. Because imagination is nothing but our mind doing what I call as drama bazi. Little bit of drama bazi is fine. Little bit of pity party, why me, poor me is also fine. 
but build a boundary around it. If too many minutes and hours of our day is going away in that, it's not productive. Okay, Sumed, you have responded to what uh, a student had asked, what Bhairavi had asked. Yes, you're right. Ashutosh, you're correct. Perspective makes a big difference. Uh, Divesh, you're partly correct. Yes, you must make the most of your life, but we have to do it in a way which is not reckless and heedless. So yes, we do accept who we are. We enjoy our lives, but we also making thing, we also work towards making things good for ourselves. Rohan, you're most welcome. Okay, so Sakshi, you have shared a question that has come up. Uh, yes. Okay, okay, okay. So Sakshi, the question that has come to you from the student, I'll just paraphrase this for the benefit of the group. What happens when you get emotionally attached to somebody and that person betrays you? Uh, okay. It's hard for us to focus and we feel left alone, we feel bad, and then we become prisoners in our own mind, so to speak. The first thing to understand is different people's minds are wired differently. So therefore the way in which I think friendship should evolve need not be the way my best friend thinks friendship should evolve. Or the way in which I think a relationship should grow need not be the way someone else thinks. Does it mean I'm right and he or she is wrong? No, it's a bit like the six blind men and the elephant story. Each person is touching a different part of the elephant. Each person is correct, but each person is also limited. So the question, whoever is raised, this would be my answer to you. Learn to firstly see the limitation of your perspective. And when I say your, I don't mean just you as an individual, each one of us. Each one of us has a perspective based on who we are, what our experiences are. Learn to see that, learn to admit that. Understand that somebody else may have a different reason for doing what they're doing. That way, you will see that what you think is backstabbing and betrayal to that person Maybe just being pragmatic and practical. Maybe his or her brain wiring is different. Maybe that person is just a bit less selfish, sorry, more selfish compared to you, which is fine, which is absolutely fine. So that point we are making is understanding perspectives makes an enormous difference for self-acceptance and acceptance of others. Point one. Point two. When you still feel bad and your mind gets caught in that trap because there's this feeling of injustice, tell yourself everything happens for a reason and action has a reaction. What you get today is a reaction for the past action. What the person does now leads on to his or her future reactions. Now, having said this, don't sit back with a sense of anticipatory glee. They don't, this person did something bad to me. Now I'm going to rub my hands and watch what happens in this person's life. I hope something bad happens. No, that's unhealthy thinking and it's completely unnecessary. Completely unnecessary. Just drop that thought. Whatever happens to him or her, that's that person's life. Our journey is about making sure our path is clean. Our thinking is clean. Our words and actions are clean because what we do now determines our future. Never forget Newton's third law of motion. To an action, there's an equal and opposite reaction. So my second suggestion to the student who's raised this question that Sakshi has shared is learn to allow karma to work. Karma takes care of things and it makes a huge difference. Okay, so there's a raised hand, but I'm just going to come to you before going through the other questions on the chat. Uh, yes, so Sakshi, what you've given again, we don't even realize that we have picked up certain habits. Yes, in fact, for me that happened because before I knew it, Netflix had become a part of every day. And I told myself, Pia, what is this happening? You're supposed to be a grown up, right? And you're a trainer and a teacher. So this happens. Please note, if it's a mental habit, it happens even faster. If it's physical, you can still stop it. You, It's easier to watch if it's physical. But if it's at the mental level, it's tougher to spot. So all you need to do is spend few minutes every day, either in the morning or at night before you sleep, just reflecting. In the morning, set your intention for the day. In the night, look back at the day and see how it was. Even two minutes is good enough. And you don't need to write. A lot of people talk of writing. If writing works for you, great. Like I like to keep a gratitude journal. I just write one nice thing, one good thing that I'm grateful for. If it works for you, great. Otherwise, don't bother writing. Do it in your mind. 
start the day with a small intention and prayer that I hope today's day is productive. I pray that it should be fine. I pray that I'm successful, healthy, I'm fine, I'm happy. And whoever I meet, I can give that same happiness, that same good spirit and optimism. And at night, look back and see, was I a better person today than what I was yesterday? So that way you'll come to note in case you have changed your habits. So I hope that question gets answered. Okay, Anupama, most welcome. Uh, okay, so Sparsh, yes, yes, Sparsh, this is common. I hope we've talked about this at enough length. I think binge watching deserves a different session, perhaps all by itself, a different webinar all by itself. But today I've shared many, many mind hacks with you. So Sparsh, again, thank you for raising this. That's very honest on your part. Like I shared, what you're going through is you're not the only one. I know people who binge watch regular basis. I know people in their 60s were doing it. Okay, so this happens throughout the ages. The main trick is to understand it's bad for you. So read up more on cognitive science. Make a wall for yourself that beyond this, I don't watch. And most important, when your mind craves, give it a good substitute. So like for me, Wilbur Smith, third story right now is the thing that I'm waiting to read. Give yourself something happy and healthy to look forward to. That way you can say, okay, I'm not binge watching, but this is what I do. So if you like doodling, get into it. If you like making those beautiful mandala paintings, get into it. If you want to make memes, get into it. You decide in what way you're going to use your intelligence and creativity. Because if you're a gamer or a binge watcher, please understand you have a mind that gets bored fast. A mind that gets bored fast is an intelligent mind. Only an intelligent mind is capable of getting bored. A dull mind can't get bored. Which is good news, right? Because if you're intelligent, that's happy for you. That's good for you. So now what you need to do? Find a healthy way to beat that boredom. Rather than binge watching, ask yourself, do I do a new Coursera course which helps me? Do I do an online internship that helps me? Can I learn? Can I use Duolingo app or something and learn a new language perhaps? In fact, I know a student who was initially into K-dramas, but then in order to come out of it, I suggested to her that, why don't you try learning? She learned Korean, Mandarin, and now I think she's learning something else. And now she has stopped watching. She doesn't watch dramas anymore, but she's totally into languages and she's earning part-time by giving translation services. I mean, how cool is that? Okay, so I think we need to wrap up this session. Let's see if there are any last questions that come up. Yes, Neeraj, what you've asked, we have talked about this anger. Yes, just be kind with yourself, breathe deep, understand there's a different reason for the anger. Anger is a manifestation of something else. Okay, 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 okay. Uh, yes, so Ashutosh, you're right. Walter Levin was an MIT, that's right. Reading fiction is extremely useful, Ashutosh. It's like uh, stepping into a wonderland. Time won't permit me to go into the details. Doesn't matter if what you're reading is Harry Potter personally. For example, I love Harry Potter. I've read all the books. So read what you want to. You enjoy comics, read comics. Enjoy Asterix, read Asterix and Tintin. Enjoy good quality fiction, read that. You'll know how it changes your mind and it brings that smile on your face and a chuckle that comes to your face. Yes, so uh, we'll have to wrap up. <laughs> okay, I think what I'm going to request everybody to do is if you have more questions, my apologies, I've been getting a lot of messages that we need to wrap up. We are really, really short of time. My apologies if I haven't been able to do justice to a few questions that came up towards the end. Please don't mind. Send us a question separately. Sort team, I'm going to request you. Please send me the questions by email. I promise I will give you the answers by email. You all have the contact details of the student. You can pass on the answers, okay? Truly, my apologies because we need to conclude the session. But thank you so, so, so much. It's such a nice, wonderful feeling for us because the level of the questions in visit it always reinforces our faith in you. It makes us happy. And Anushka is aware, this particular module that I have done, this is customized for y'all. This has gone through four iterations and I was not happy every time. I kept on making new versions of it. And I'm so glad we could do this for you today morning. Thank you so, so much. Stay blessed, stay happy, everybody. Anushka, please share the Google feedback form link. I think uh, you can just put it up on the chat, Anushka. Please let us know if you feel the session is useful. 
And if you remember, I told you, think of one thing which will be your takeaway. Very quickly, if you want, take 10 seconds and put up what is one takeaway for you from today's session. Most welcome. I can see a lot of thank yous coming up on the chat box. Most welcome, most welcome, most welcome. Thank you, ma'am. Uh, that was very insightful. I, I'm sure everyone gained a lot from it. Uh, now to conclude this beautiful session, we have Ayushi Pamnani, our sort secretary. Okay, so uh, am I audible, guys? Uh, yes, yeah. Ayushi, you are. Yes. Okay, so good afternoon, everyone. Uh, so on behalf of the sort council, I would like to extend a hearty vote of thanks to our speaker, Priya Mukherjee, ma'am. Listening to you has been therapeutic and you have a way of clarifying the most complicated issues in the simplest way possible. And I would like to extend a special thanks to our principal ma'am for giving us an opportunity to organize this webinar. I also wish to express my gratitude to our staff in charge, DT ma'am, for her guidance and encouragement. And lastly, I would like to thank all the attendees for taking time out of their busy schedules and being here with us. We have something insightful coming up on the 2nd of April where you'll be informed about how you can contribute to eradicate illiteracy. So stay tuned for that. And to all the attendees, please fill the feedback, feedback form and the link is in the chat box. And I would request everyone to switch on the cameras for a few minutes. Thank you so much, Ayushi. And my special thanks to the SORT team and to all the students here, especially to SORT. This was like being invited to a happy occasion. Okay, so thank you so, so, so much. God bless you all. It's been wonderful to interact and I didn't realize the time. Luckily, I don't have the clock in front of me. Why I say luckily is otherwise I would have felt really, really bad. But my apologies, students, please bear with me for having taken up so much of your time. But thank you for the time for interaction. Thank you, ma'am. Most welcome, Sumit. And keep the questioning mind alive, all of you. Anushka ma'am has shared the feedback link. Please do let us know if this was useful. Today's module is customized. If you say it is useful, we'd like to run it for other institutes of BES as well. So do let us know, please. Thanks so much. Have a lovely day and a lovely long weekend. Stay safe and enjoy your weekend, okay? Thank you. Thank you, ma'am. Thank you, everyone. Um, Effie's and uh, host, can you please stop recording?